You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Crashing through the lies and disinformation, it's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show on this February the 8th, 2015. I'm David Knight. I'll be your host today. Paul Joseph Watson will be joining me in the second hour. We have a lot of news to go over. You know, there's been a lot of talk about Brian Williams and the news about how he lied about his personal experiences, how he essentially made himself kind of a uh, anchorman superhero. But you know, there's some real substantive things that he lied to us about. We're going to talk about that, but it's part of a much larger issue of credibility from our government, from the media. We're being told that we need to just shut up and take the vaccine. We don't need to ask questions about the kind of global regimes they want to enact in the name of climate change. We should just shut up. All those climate deniers, all those Vaccine deniers, yeah, that's what they're calling people now who question the numbers that are coming out from the CDC, that are questioning the numbers that are coming out from the pharmaceutical companies. We're going to look at the history of some of these measles outbreaks. We're going to look at the swine flu epidemic from 1976. We've got some amazing clips from 60 Minutes, back when there was some real journalism, back when the pharmaceutical companies didn't own the media companies lock, stock, and barrel. You can't turn on the television set and, and see anything other than one pharmaceutical commercial after the other. They basically own these media companies. It doesn't matter if it's Fox News or MSNBC or CNN. They are owned by the pharmaceutical companies. And people can't get past this cognitive dissonance of seeing puppy dogs romping in the sunshine and the high grass as they go through a very rapid litany of all the serious side effects that these medicines that they're trying to sell you're going to create. And if people can't get past that cognitive dissonance, if they can't get past the understanding that these vaccines have some real safety issues, there's some real issues with what goes into the vaccines. There's some real issues with the fact that they're giving people multiple vaccines instead of spacing these things out. When they give them to people, all of those things are significant. Nevertheless, the slate is just wiped clean. And if anybody complains about this, they say, well, you just don't understand how vaccines work. I understand perfectly well the theory of vaccines, and I understand that we're not getting clean vaccines. And as we pointed out last week, it's like saying that you're getting uh, potatoes when you buy fast food fries. There's a lot of stuff that's added to those fast food fries that makes it more than just potatoes. And that's also the case of the vaccines. We're also going to be talking about how uh, Alan Greenspan is predicting that there's going to be an exit from the euro that's inevitable. This is all something that I think is paving the way, just as we see with all these trade agreements, it's paving the way again for world government. Because what he says is this is not going to be fixed unless we go to a politically integrated Eurozone. See, that's the end game. They want to go to a full political integration. If they don't do that, they're not going to get their world government. And that is what this secret trade uh, uh, treaties that are being negotiated and secretly by corporate lobbyists, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the Transatlantic Partnership, we're not allowed to see what those are. Our elected representatives are not allowed to see what those are. They're going to bring in these, quote unquote, free trade agreements. Ron Paul said a long time ago, you don't need thousands of pages to have free trade. It is a managed trade agreement. And it's far more than that. NAFTA was far more than that. These are all steps toward global governance, just as this myth of man-made climate change. And I say a myth. We have an article that uh, we're going to talk about with Paul Joseph Watson that's up on the Drudge Report. It's a headline on the uh, Drudge Report, essentially. Fiddling with temperature data is the biggest science scandal ever. That's from the London Telegraph. I'm going to talk about that. And, of course, that's something that goes back years as well. That goes back to, I think it was 2009 when they first did the uh, Climate Gate dump. They got thousands of emails, and a couple of years later, they did Climate Gate 2, where they got 5,000 emails. It just turned up on a Russian server after years of getting stonewalled on FOIA requests, wanting to see the data from these scientists who are trying to reorganize everything in our society and bring other things to the table, but yet... They, they wouldn't allow the data out, so somebody leaked it. We saw the same kind of fudging going on back then. Stay with us. We're going to be right back. 
You won't want to miss this report about vaccines. Cells become toxic, they die early, and aging sets in. No one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. Just one of the key compounds, BioPQQ, is backed by major clinical studies. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? We now have the synergistic solution. Secure your DNA force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. The average person's life is filled with unexpected challenges. Unlock the energy it takes to defeat these daily beasts with super male or super female vitality, specifically designed to assist the body in regulating proper hormone balance to create superior vitality in males and females. Supercharge and conquer your world at InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-88-253-3139. InfoWars.com Frontline Report. It's Alex Jones. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show on this Sunday, February 8th, 2015. I'm David Knight. I'll be your host today. Paul Joseph Watson will be joining us from the UK in the second hour. Of course, there's a big story that's up on the Drudge Report right now. The fiddling with temperature data is the biggest science scandal ever. The data is there. They've been trying to cover up this data for a very long time. We've had climate gate one, we had climate gate number two. We had situation where one of these they leaked 1,000 emails and the other one they leaked 5,000 emails. They saw scientists who were pushing this man-made global warming agenda, talking about how they can hide the decline talking about how the data didn't match their models, even in the short term. And they're talking about models that are predicting climate change over decades, over centuries. It's very hard to verify that. And yet, we have seen already that their models are failing even in the short term. Even after a couple of decades, their models are not holding up. So we're going to talk to Paul Joseph Watson about that. There's also news out of uh, Utah. There's a massive Utah cyber attack, up to 300 million cyber attacks per day. They think it may have something to do with the fact that they've got the NSA facility there. That's where they're storing all the information that the NSA is collecting on everybody worldwide in violation of U.S. law, in violation of the Constitution. But, of course, they could care less. It's important that we talk about the Constitution, even though we understand that for the people in Washington, it is a dead piece of paper. It is not self-executing. But we have to get people to understand that they're using the Constitution to presumably give themselves authority while ignoring the very law that they swear to uphold. In this particular case in Utah, they say just five years ago, they had only about 25,000 to 30,000 attempted cyber attacks every day. Now it is 300 million attacks against the state government's databases every day. That's 10,000 times greater. And they say, well, you know, what could it be? Well, maybe it's uh, hackers who think they can get to the Utah data center through the state computer system is what they said. No, I think it's really more probably a retaliation for being quizlings of the NSA when they violate the law and nothing happens to them. And they brag about the fact that they violate the law. You know, it could be coming from the NSA itself. You know, they're behind most of the hacks, most of the... Uh, uh, collection of data in this country, uh, as well as the rest of the world. Maybe it's coming from the NSA, but I think it's probably a retaliation. As we look at the stories that have come out this last week, I think there's a trend in terms of credibility. Over and over again, we see the credibility of the news media, as well as the government being exposed as absolute lies. We've seen this with Brian Williams, where he embellished his own personal resume. He's talked about how he looked down the barrel of an RPG when his helicopter was shot down. Didn't happen. He talked about how he looked down the barrel of a gun as he was being robbed uh, selling Christmas trees for a church. That's been called into question. Saving kittens from burning buildings, all this kind of stuff. But you know, the lies that really matter are the lies that he told, the lies that he supported from the government when we went to the Iraq war. There's an excellent article up on antiwar.com where they talk about the, um, 
the many sins of Brian Williams. They say, although he just misremembered, he says, it sounds very much like uh, George Bush, what happened uh, in that helicopter incident. They say that it really, for him, it goes back to 9-11. As a citizen, he had thought on that fateful day, he said, thank God that Dick Cheney and Don Rumsfeld and Colin Powell were on this team. How together we all seemed. You know, that's the, the kind of mentality. And even, they point out in this, even when he had an interview in 2006 with President Bush, when he could have asked him, the questions is, uh, exactly, why did we go to Iraq? Uh, you didn't even say they were the ones behind the 9-11 attack. You said they had weapons of mass destruction. Those weren't there. Instead, he said nothing. And when it was being covered on a daily basis, as uh, they wrote back every day, some people on the inside uh, told uh, uh, the author here, every day Brian Williams was asking the question, did Baghdad correspondent Richard Engel have any news? other than another 20 Iraqi civilians killed when an IED detonated, leaving the same smoking carcasses and pathetic scenes of loved ones crying. In other words, he doesn't, he's not interested in what happens there unless it serves the military-industrial complex's agenda of going to war. That's what we should be concerned about, not just his personal credibility. He knew that he could get away with these lies to embellish uh, his own personal reputation because he's been lying to the American people as part of the regular news on a daily basis. And we see this happening across the spectrum. We saw this happening and being used with the Sony interview hack. We see how they're trying to use that to bring forward an absolute control of the Internet, saying that uh, this was something that came from uh, North Korea. We've got to be protected. So everybody needs to share all their data with the NSA. We need to grant immunity to the corporations who are turning over all your information to the NSA. And we need to establish the government in firm control of the Internet, just like they are in authoritarian regimes. And when we look at the way they use this comedy, the interview, to push for the assassination of a leader that they're opposed to, and consciously doing this, coordinating with someone who was in the RAND Corporation, coordinating with the State Department, saying we want to change the regime in North Korea, and the only way that we can do this is through assassination. So let's get that meme out there. Let's throw that into that comedy. It really kind of sheds light on what the BBC is about to do this week. They've got a uh, three-part comedy that they're going to air, a sitcom called Asylum. And this is really about Julian Assange, of course, the uh, uh, idiot that they've got. And, of course, this is about character assassination because, of course, character assassination always precedes real assassination. And they've been after Julian Assange because of the lies, the government lies that he exposed. They've been after him for quite a long time. And, of course, as you probably know, he's been holed up for years in uh, the embassy of Ecuador in London. They gave him asylum, but he's essentially been under house arrest there. The British have spent more than $10 million, maybe it's 10 million pounds, surrounding that embassy to make sure that he doesn't get out. So now they're going to come after him with a comedy. And the interesting thing about this comedy is the person who wrote it, whose name is Phipps, had tweeted before, if the Met police want to regain my trust, they should drag Julian Assange out of the embassy and shoot him in the back of the head in the middle of Trafalgar Square. There you go. That sounds just like Fox News when they said the same thing about Julian Assange. Just take him out and shoot him. Well, actually, they said the same thing about Alex Jones. You know, when, they, when, when Barrett Brown retweeted what Fox News had said in terms of an assassination tweet... Uh, against Julian Assange, when he retweeted that, the FBI added that to the charges against Barrett Brown. They said, you're threatening an FBI agent. And he wasn't doing that at all. He was quoting the tweet, what was said on Fox News. And so now you see that Fox News doesn't get charges brought against them for saying Julian Assange ought to just be shot. And of course, it doesn't happen with the BBC either. Instead, the guy gets a job writing this comedy. And here's the premise of the comedy here. In the comedy which will air on February the 9th, tomorrow. Ben Miller plays an Assange-type character that's described as a serious, self-important egotist who's accused of leaking important documents. He's forced to share his quarters in the London embassy of a fictional Latin American country, El Rico, with a guy named Ludo Backslash. Oh, who is that? Well, they even point out that that's a reference to Kim.com. So they take all the government's enemies people who would expose and have exposed the government's criminal actions. Let's just put all these people in a sitcom, and we can create these sitcom straw men 
make them look ridiculous and tell everybody, hey, this is really Julian Assange. This is really Kim dot, uh, Kim com. You know, this is the way they're using comedies now as propaganda tools. And they're very seriously promoting assassination and doing things that are way outside of the rule of law. And another piece of news before I get to the vaccines, and I've got an amazing going back into history, amazing look at the uh, way 60 Minutes when they did real journalism, the way they looked at the 1976 swine flu vaccination case. This is a very important piece to look at in terms of how they're trying to push vaccines on us. And we're out of time in this segment. When we come back, we're going to start with a guy from uh, some place called Blue Nation. And this guy sounds like the guy who called while I was doing the radio show a couple of weeks ago and started telling me that I needed to take vaccine and didn't know anything about what he was talking about. Stay with us. It's an amazing clip. That and the 1976 swine flu. We'll be right back. For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. You don't have to be a doctor to know. The fall and winter months are the most dangerous time of year in North America when it comes to you and your family's health. InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of silver. Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting-edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high-quality Silver Bullet from InfoWarsLife.com. No survival chest is complete without Silver Bullet. Secure your Silver Bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Silver Bullet. The month of February is all about Valentine's Day. Big heart-shaped boxes filled with delicious candy. What if we the Patriots hijacked Valentine's Day and instead made it about human liberty and individual empowerment? I'm all about human potential. I'm all about the individual being empowered. The establishment is the opposite. That's why they spike our water with fluoride, GMO, estrogen mimickers, and the rest of the garbage. InfoWars is striking back in the month of February with Human Empowerment Month. How we can come together and win the human race. And to celebrate the kickoff of Human Empowerment Month, we're slashing prices on InfoWarsLife.com products like Super Male and Super Female Vitality. The sale is only running for the month, 20% off, and there's a lot of other powerful specials at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWarsLife.com, celebrating human potential in the month of February. Visit InfoWarsLife.com to find this special and many others in the month of February. Again, InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. What disaster is so powerful? It unleashes a chain of mass pandemics, economic meltdowns, and violent food riots, all at the same time. NASA has already set the countdown timer, and right now the 21st century apocalypse is less than 13 months away. Former CIA Director James Woolsey says two-thirds of U.S. population could perish. In a matter of seconds, the world as we know it will cease to exist. The world's economy will be wiped out. Mass riots will follow. Ancient diseases will reemerge. How will you shield yourself and your loved ones from this upcoming apocalypse? Go to darkestdays.info to find out proven methods of protecting yourself, your loved ones, and even your entire community when this worst-case scenario unravels. That's D-A-R-K-E-S-T-D-A-Y-S dot I-N-F-O. Darkestdays.info. Go there before this life-saving information becomes unavailable to the large public. Go to darkestdays.info now. The government's Department of Homeland Security is buying up loads of ammo. At the same time, they're restricting civilians' rights to own and purchase firearms. Can you put two and two together? Infidel body armor can stop every round, including hollow points and 308 sniper rounds. Is reasonably priced and fully legal. But for how long? Go to infidelbodyarmor.com, spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L, bodyarmor.com. Infidel Body Armor just won't quit.
When cells become toxic, they die early and aging sets in. No one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. Just one of the key compounds, BioPQQ, is backed by major clinical studies. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? We now have the synergistic solution. Secure your DNA force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Waging war on corruption. It's Alex Jones. Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host today. I'll be joined in the next hour of Paul Joseph Watson. We're going to be talking about the article that's at the top of the Drudge Report right now. Fiddling with temperature data is the biggest science scandal ever. That's at the top of the Drudge Report right now. And Paul Joseph Watson and I are going to be talking about that in the next hour. And, of course, people who don't buy their interpretation of the weather data, of the climate data, are called climate deniers. We're not denying climate. We're skeptical of what they're telling us about the climate. We're skeptical of their models. We're skeptical of their conclusions. But now, of course, if you don't want to uh, just accept because it's being told to you by the authorities, either the information about man-made global warming or vaccines, you're now a vaccine denier as well. When you're talking about science, you should immediately have flags go up when somebody who's talking about science starts using deniers as if this is some kind of a religious debate. Because it is a religious debate for them. It truly is. They're accepting this on the authority of somebody that is a scientist. And you just need to shut up because you don't have anything to say about that. This is a clip from a... Uh, someplace called Blue Nation. And I thought this guy's take on the whole vaccine debate was very much like some of the callers that we've gotten as well. Listen to him. He lays this out. This is not something that uh, anybody can accuse. You know, I was accused of setting up this idiot who called in a couple of weeks ago. Some people on YouTube are saying that. This is how these people think. Here's this guy with uh, Blue Nation. Go ahead and you run You know that what clip. one of modern medicine's greatest accomplishments is? Vaccines. Now, you've probably heard about the outbreak at Disneyland. It's up to nearly 100 confirmed cases of measles, a disease which we could completely eradicate if everyone would just vaccinate their damn kids. Yeah, Some people, damn kids. they still choose not to vaccinate, and their reasons are terrible. <laughs> First, you don't know your child's body better than your pediatrician does. He went to, like, a special school <laughs> where he studied your child's body for years. He knows all the names of all the parts, including <laughs> okay. the parts on okay. the inside. Well, including the parts on the inside. I mean, extra special. I mean, this guy went to like a special school for like years, you know, and he like totally knows all the parts of your kid's body by name, inside and out. I mean, you, you should listen to these guys. Listen, when anybody comes to you with that kind of blind, servile attitude to people in authority, you need to just reject that. If they can't give you reasons for what they believe, if they haven't investigated it themselves, they're the ones who need to shut up. And I want to talk about the, the hatred, the scapegoating that's being applied to people who actually have done their research. Starting with this article out of California, this is an op-ed piece from the Los Angeles Times. This guy's name is Michael Hiltzik. I think is the way you pronounce his name. He says, California moves to end personal belief exemptions for vaccinations at last. At last, finally, we're going to get rid of this. He says, every state in the union allows exemptions from immunizations for medical reasons. All states but two, West Virginia and Mississippi, also grant exemptions for religious beliefs. But only 20 allow loose, open-ended, philosophical objections to keep children unvaccinated. And he talks about vaccine denial. Again, religious terms. Now, he's talking about ending a personal belief exemption. That is informed consent. I don't need to give them a reason for why I don't need to do something. They need to give me a reason for why I should do it. And be honest about the science behind it. Be honest about the statistics behind it. But they're not. 
And I'm not just talking about this particular incident. We've seen a pattern of lying from the CDC, from the government, from the media for decades, going back 40 years to 1976. We've got a clip right here. Let's uh, get that clip ready from um, 60 Minutes. This is an investigation after the catastrophe around the swine flu vaccination. Now, at that time, about 40 years ago, 1976, the CDC came out and said, we've got this life-threatening disease. This is going to be like the influenza epidemic of uh, 1917, 1918. We had uh, more people die than uh, did with World War I with the actual hostilities. So they panicked the public. They got 43 million, I'm sorry, 46 million people to get vaccinated. Then they wound up with 4,000 people suing them because of permanent injury or death. And they wound up having to pay, or at least the uh, lawsuits at the time that they did this report, were $3.5 billion in 1976 dollars. That would be about $15 billion today. But of course, that was something that uh, we shouldn't be concerned about. Listen to the way that they, they put this out to the people in 1976. It sounds very familiar to the way they're couching the terms today. Let's play that. Remember the swine flu scare of 1976? That was the year the U.S. government told us all that swine flu could turn out to be a killer that could spread across the nation. And Washington decided that every man, woman, and child in the nation should get a shot to prevent a nationwide outbreak, a pandemic. Well, 46 million of us obediently took the shot. And now 4,000 Americans are claiming damages from Uncle Sam amounting to three and a half billion dollars because of what happened when they took that shot. By far the greatest number of the claims, two-thirds of them, are for neurological damage or even death, allegedly triggered by the flu shot. Well, this year you can get protection. The vaccines are safe, easy to take, and this they is can an actual protect commercial you against flu. So roll up your sleeve. Protect roll yourself. Up your sleeve. One of those who did roll up her sleeve was Judy Roberts. She was perfectly healthy, an active woman, when in November of 1976, she took her shot. Now, Two those weeks later, she said she began to feel a numbness starting up her legs. On leg braces at this point. I joked about it at that time. I said I'll be numb to the knees by Friday as it, if this keeps up. By the following week, I was totally paralyzed. So completely paralyzed, in fact, that they had to operate on her to enable her to breathe. And that picture where they stop right there, they show an indentation in her neck. where They basically had to do a tracheotomy. It essentially paralyzed her. She never got back full control. She would always be in braces, always be hobbled. If you look at that report, her husband is guilt stricken because she never wanted to take vaccines. He talked her into it. And I think there's a lesson there because when we look at this uh, editorial from this guy in the LA Times, he says a change in California law that went into effect in January the 1st, 2014, may have begun to turn around the trend of people who don't want to take vaccines. What happens is if you've got a child in school and you say, no, I don't give you my consent to do this. I'm not comfortable with what you want to do. Then basically they bring you in. You have to come in and receive counseling about the benefits and the risks of childhood immunization from a medical professional. But they're not going to be telling you the real risks. Let's run the next part of this uh, 60 Minutes report here showing how they panicked people into doing this. Go ahead. Dr. David Sensor, then head of the CDC, the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta, is now in private industry. He yeah, devised the industry. swine flu program <laughs> and he pushed it. Rewarded. You began to give flu shots to the American people in October of 76. October 1st. By that time, how many cases of swine flu around the world had been reported? There had been uh, several reported, but none confirmed. Get that? Now, nearly none everyone confirmed. was to receive the shot in a public health facility where a doctor might not be present. Therefore, it was up to the CDC to come up with some kind of official consent form, giving the public all the information it all right, needed we're about come the back with this report. Shot. They told people they had to do this. They gave them phony consent reports. We're going to be right back. Stay with us.
The month of February is all about Valentine's Day. Big heart-shaped boxes filled with delicious candy. What if we the Patriots hijacked Valentine's Day and instead made it about human liberty and individual empowerment? I'm all about human potential. I'm all about the individual being empowered. The establishment is the opposite. That's why they spike our water with fluoride, GMO, estrogen mimickers, and the rest of the garbage. InfoWars is striking back in the month of February with Human Empowerment Month. How we can come together and win the human race. And to celebrate the kickoff of Human Empowerment Month, we're slashing prices on InfoWarsLife.com products like Super Male and Super Female Vitality. The sale is only running for the month, 20% off, and there's a lot of other powerful specials at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWarsLife.com, celebrating human potential in the month of February. Visit InfoWarsLife.com to find this special and many others in the month of February. Again, InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano now available in our limited first run at infowarslife.com that's infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139 the average person's life is filled with unexpected challenges. Unlock the energy it takes to defeat these daily beasts with super male or super female vitality, specifically designed to assist the body in regulating proper hormone balance to create superior vitality in males and females. Supercharge and conquer your world at InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-88-253-3139. The government's Department of Homeland Security is buying up loads of ammo. At the same time, they're restricting civilians' rights to own and purchase firearms. Can you put two and two together? Infidel body armor can stop every round, including hollow points and 308 sniper rounds. Is reasonably priced and fully legal. But for how long? Go to InfidelBodyArmor.com, spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L BodyArmor.com. Infidel Body Armor just won't quit. In the near future. When you realize how fake it all is, the football, the security basketball. Alert. Security alert. This is Homeland Security. Analysis. InfoWars building independent media operations. You let the worst people get controlled and tell us that we are the ones responsible. Prime Directive discredit Alex Jones. Jones is the wildly popular conspiracy theorist. It's a popular conspiracy theory talk show called InfoWars. Alex Jones is now in an Austin jail. These people are assaulted. Targeting of patriots engaged. They are never going to stop. They're never going to deviate from their program until we stop them. Block free iPhone app at InfoWars.com. Block free podcast and video feed. Imperative destroy Prison Planet TV. You gotta set your eye on the enemy, not worry about what propaganda they put out. Intellectually, it's because you can feel it. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. In this present crisis, government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem. From time to time, we've been tempted to believe that society has become too complex to be managed by self-rule. That government by an elite group is superior the government for, by, and of the people. The Alex Jones Show, because there is a war on for your mind. Hello, me. Meet the real me and my misfits way of life. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show on this Sunday, February 8th, 2015. I'm David Knight. I'll be your host today. In the next hour, we'll be joined with Paul Joseph Watson from the UK. In the last segment, 
We're going back and looking at the 1976 swine flu epidemic. And the epidemic was really a vaccine epidemic. It wasn't an epidemic of the flu. It was, it was the result of the vaccines that were pushed on the American public by the CDC and the pharmaceutical companies. 43 million, sorry, 46 million people got vaccinated then. 4,000 sued the government for permanent injury and death. Three and a half billion dollars at that time, over $15 billion in today's money. Now, we ran out of time in the last segment. I want to pick that back up where Mike Wallace, 60 Minutes, was talking to who was then the head of the CDC, David Sensor. And he's asking him about what information they had that was so vital for the American public to get mass inoculated. Here's what they had to say. Dr. David Sensor, then head of the CDC, the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta, is now in private industry. He devised the swine flu program and he pushed it. You began to give flu shots to the American people in October of 76. October 1st. By that time, how many cases of swine flu around the world had been reported? There had been uh, several reported, but none confirmed. Hold it right there. Hold it right there. How many had been reported? Now, this guy, this is a classic 60 Minutes investigation where you've got the sweating, corrupt official behind the desk uh, prevaricating around the bridge, like we've seen with uh, James Clapper, like we've seen with Michael Hayden. Why is it these guys all look like Karl Rove? I mean, it's just amazing. But he basically said, no, there weren't any confirmed cases. He wouldn't even give a number about how many reported cases there were. Nevertheless, they start this massive PR campaign to pressure the public. And that's what we're seeing with the vaccines for the measles now. And we're going to see it with other diseases. We're going to have a medical tyranny where they no longer want your consent. But back in the day, 40 years ago, they thought they needed your consent. And so here's what they did. Let's run the rest of that clip. Guys, flu around the world had been reported. There had been uh, several reported, but none confirmed. Now, nearly everyone was to receive the shot in a public health facility where a doctor might not be present. Therefore, it was up to the CDC to come up with some kind of official consent form. Oh, they wanted Giving the consent. public all the information it needed about the swine flu shot. They don't care about getting your this consent anymore. This form stated that the swine flu vaccine had been tested. What it didn't say was that after those tests were completed, the scientists developed another vaccine. And that was the one given to most of the 46 million who took the shot. Okay, and we're going to find out a little bit more about that vaccine. But do you understand what they're doing? First of all, 40 years ago, they thought it was important to have your consent. Today, they don't want your consent. They're demonizing and scapegoating people who have done their research, who have questions about the content of these vaccines. But back then, they wanted your consent. What did they do? They lied to people to get their consent. When I first came here to InfoWars, there was an investigation that had just started in North Carolina about how the EPA had lied to people to get their consent to be hooked up essentially to, I mean, not essentially, but literally hooked up to a diesel exhaust fumes to test to see whether or not fine particulate matter was going to make a difference to them. They purposely screened people who had respiratory and heart issues. They lied to them about the possible effects. At the same time, or just prior to that, the EPA's director, Lisa Jackson, had gone before Congress and said, at the levels that we're talking about a fine particulate matter, we're not talking about making people sick. We're talking about killing them. And the people, the number of people who are dying from fine particulate matter is greater than the number of people who are dying from cancer. Now, that was a lie. But the EPA, in order to extend their jurisdiction, created this experiment, and they duplicated it again in California using children in that particular case, we've now found out. But they did this experiment purposely searching for people who would be adversely affected by this and exposed them to levels that the EPA had already said were, would be fatal. They exposed them to levels that were 70 times greater than that fatal level. These are the kind of people that we're told we're supposed to just trust whatever they tell us. We're supposed to listen to them because... They're the scientists. And the people who oppose this, as we see in this editorial from the LA Times saying, let's get rid of the personal belief exemptions for vaccines at last. Anybody who says otherwise, even if they're a doctor, they're not doctors who dissent from the majority opinion. According to this guy, they are medical charlatans.
See, anybody that doesn't promote the conventional wisdom or the government or the pharmaceutical industry's story is a medical charlatan. No discussion of the science, just call them a medical charlatan. And what he was saying was they were surprised at how effective it was to come in and browbeat parents who had concerns about the vaccinations. They said, this suggests that for many parents, skepticism of va vaccines is only lightly held. And even placing a mild obstacle in the path of waivers prompts them to get their kids immunized. And so he goes on to quote this person who has co-sponsored a bill that would repeal people's consent. They call that the personal belief repeal. No, that's repealing the fact that they have to get your consent to inject you with whatever the pharmaceutical companies want to sell the government in large volume. She says, a parent's decision to ignore science and medical facts puts other children at risk, says Assemblyman Lorena Gonzalez out of San Diego. Let's go back to the 60 Minutes episode because this is one last clip I want to play from this where we have a CDC whistleblower who went to 60 Minutes who told them that they knew ahead of time that not only was this not the vaccine that they had talk to people about in the consent forms, but they also knew that it had adverse effects. Here's that clip. So you told your superiors, the men in charge of the swine flu immunization program, about the possibility of neurological disorders. Absolutely. What would you say if I told you that your superiors say that you never told them about the possibility of neurological complications? That's nonsense. I can't believe that they would say that they did not know that there were neurological illnesses associated with influenza vaccination. That simply is not true. We did know that. I have said that Dr. Hatwick has never told me of uh, this his is the director feelings of the CDC. on this subject. Uh, and he's lying. I guess you would have to um, make that assumption. Hold it right there. And why does Hold this it right report? there. Pause that right there. He pauses. This is a classic moment, just like James Clapper lying to Congress, lying to the American public when he was asked about dragnet spying. He pauses. He glances around. He's <laughs> sweaty. I mean, he looks very much. All these guys look alike. And he says, well, I guess you would have to draw that conclusion. He can't bring himself to say that even when it's totally contradictory, he's totally contradicting what the CDC whistleblower is saying. He can't bring himself to call the other guy a liar because he knows he's not lying. He knows that he's lying. Continue on with that clip. This report from your own agency dated July 1976 Wallace, lists the neurological complications as a possibility. I think the uh, consensus of uh, the scientific community was that the evidence relating neurologic disorders to influenza immunization uh, was such that they did not feel that this association was a real one. You didn't feel it was necessary to tell the people that information? No. Uh, we I don't think need that, to inform uh, you. Over the, the years, we have tried to inform the American people as, as fully as possible. <laughs> Giving them false information about the vaccination. Now, what is the real truth? We're told today that if you get vaccinated twice, you have 99% protection against measles and all these other diseases, uh, mumps and rubella that are in that vaccine. That's not the truth. We're going to break that down for you when we come back. It turns out that we've had outbreaks in the past that involved nobody but vaccinated patients. Patient zero was a vaccinated patient, twice vaccinated. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Cells become toxic, they die early, and aging sets in. No one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. Just one of the key compounds, BioPQQ, is backed by major clinical studies. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? We now have the synergistic solution. Secure your DNA force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. The average person's life is filled with unexpected challenges. Unlock the energy it takes to defeat these daily beasts with super male or super female vitality, specifically designed to assist the body in regulating proper hormone balance to create superior vitality in males and females. Supercharge and conquer your world at InfoWarsLife.com or call 
253-3139. For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. You don't have to be a doctor to know. The fall and winter months are the most dangerous time of year in North America when it comes to you and your family's health. InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of silver bullet colloidal silver exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now, InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting-edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high-quality silver bullet from InfoWarsLife.com. No survival chest is complete without silver bullet. Secure your silver bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Silver bullet. What disaster is so powerful? It unleashes a chain of mass pandemics, economic meltdowns, and violent food riots, all at the same time. NASA has already set the countdown timer, and right now the 21st century apocalypse is less than 13 months away. Former CIA Director James Woolsey says two-thirds of U.S. population could perish. In a matter of seconds, the world as we know it will cease to exist. The world's economy will be wiped out. Mass riots will follow. Ancient diseases will reemerge. How will you shield yourself and your loved ones from this upcoming apocalypse? Go to darkestdays.info to find out proven methods of protecting yourself, your loved ones, and even your entire community when this worst case scenario unravels. That's D A R K E S T D A Y S dot I N F O. Darkestdays.info. Go there before this life saving information becomes unavailable to the large public. Go to darkestdays.info now. The month of February is all about Valentine's Day. Big heart-shaped boxes filled with delicious candy. What if we the Patriots hijacked Valentine's Day and instead made it about human liberty and individual empowerment? I'm all about human potential. I'm all about the individual being empowered. The establishment is the opposite. That's why they spike our water with fluoride, GMO, estrogen mimickers, and the rest of the garbage. InfoWars is striking back in the month of February with Human Empowerment Month. How we can come together and win the human race. And to celebrate the kickoff of Human Empowerment Month, we're slashing prices on InfoWarsLife.com products like Super Male and Super Female Vitality. The sale is only running for the month, 20% off, and there's a lot of other powerful specials at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWarsLife.com, celebrating human potential in the month of February. Visit InfoWarsLife.com to find this special and many others in the month of February. Again, InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. This is going to be the, the next big question for all these presidential candidates, how they feel about mandatory vaccines. It's time to get back in their face. They're trying to bully us into medical tyranny. I wanted to um, take issue with you anti-vaxxers, right-wingers, rednecks. It's about Big Brother, uh, but on the other hand, some things do require some involvement of Big Brother. What gives you the right to tell me that I should get a shot, that my children should be shot? I don't think there's anything extraordinary about resorting to freedom. Hillary Clinton took to Twitter to voice her support for vaccinations. The science is clear. The earth is round, the sky is blue, and vaccines work. Let's protect all our kids. I can't swallow and I spots on my tongue. And I just want to tell anybody out there, if you get a shot, you're a fool. Meanwhile, the insert says it can make you get measles. Understand that? We have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. But I think the parents should have some input. The state doesn't okay. own your children. Parents own the children, and it is a, an issue of freedom. But the 10% can't go to school unless they get vaccinated. The science of vaccines, which work effectively 100% of the time, and the white oh, race... Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry, you haven't read the CDC memo, have you? It was 99% last week. Now they're telling people it's 97%. So... It's not 100% even by their own statistics. Meanwhile, the outbreak was caused by vaccinated people! Resistance to tyrants is obedience to God. It's Alex Jones. Yeah, that's the question, you know. Sometimes you need Big Brother. Is that really what Megyn Kelly said? 
course, anybody that watches Fox News knows that Fox News calls for Big Brother on a variety of issues. They want Big Brother when it comes to the drug war. Uh, they want Big Brother when it comes to torturing people at Gitmo. Remember the uh, Fox News commentator who just said, uh, we're awesome. And all this complaining about torturing people at Gitmo, that's just, just because they're upset about how awesome we are. They also want Big Brother when it comes to protecting themselves uh, from something like the Charlie Hebdo shooting. So you have another Fox commentator who says, we need to not worry about militarizing the police. We need to hyper-militarize, over-militarize the police. I want to see these guys on the streets with machine guns. They're pushing Big Brother everywhere. Some people may think that they're libertarians, but they're not. And if, if that's the difference between conservatives and libertarians, then whatever. But... The bottom line is that they're always pushing for large government programs. They're pushing for, well, people come in and they want something as simple as an education. So what do they push on people? They push government schools that we have to pay a fortune for. They try to make them mandatory. Right now, we've got a personal exemption if you want to uh, get out of the government schools. Of course, the uh, government school bureaucracy is not very happy about that. They want to reestablish their dominance there, just as they don't want you to have any kind of personal belief exemptions or medical exemptions to not take a vaccine. And we were just talking about this editorial out of the LA Times who says, finally, finally, we're going to get rid of consent. That's what they're really talking about. We just played Excerpts from 60 Minutes investigation in the 1976 swine flu epidemic. It wasn't an epidemic except for the vaccine. They vaccinated 40 some odd million people and they had 4,000 people who were seriously injured or died from that vaccine. And as Mike Wallace talked to the head of the CDC, and of course, this guy never went to jail. He was never fined. The CDC was never penalized. The pharmaceutical companies that created this dangerous vaccine that harmed people, they didn't uh, go to jail either. But he has the nerve to say, no, we didn't know. We'd heard that maybe there were some cases, but we hadn't really verified that. Nevertheless, they scared everybody into getting this dangerous vaccine. They put out a consent form because in those days they thought they needed people's consent, and yet on the consent form, they lied. They switched the vaccine up. What they had information about on the form was not what they were giving people. But you hear these figures of 99% effectiveness all the time, or 100% effectiveness, as some of the callers have called in. That's not true. We have an article up on uh, Infowars.com still, flashback. Measles among vaccinated Quebec kids are questioned. 52 out of 98 teens who caught the measles were fully vaccinated. Many of them vaccinated twice. This was something that was uh, uh, released in 2011. They talked about this. Now, of course, that's not 99% effective. That's 47% effective in that particular case. 53% of the people who got it had been vaccinated twice for measles. Nevertheless, we see people who are not vaccinated as the scapegoats. They're being demonized everywhere because they want to push this medical tyranny on us. Look at this story from The Guardian. The headline says, measles outbreak spreads in the US after an unvaccinated woman visits Disneyland. But if you read the article, it says the California Department of Public Health said on January 7th that officials believe a person infected with measles was staying at the Disneyland theme park in December. That unknown patient then infected others at the park. Patient zero was not the unvaccinated woman. Many people were infected, and yet they focus on this one person who is unvaccinated. And then they go on to say that, well, you know, 90% of the people uh, who have not been vaccinated will come down with the disease. Listen, there's another case in 2011. First, we got this case I just mentioned. 52 out of 98 teens at a school who caught measles had been vaccinated twice, most of them. We got another case out of 2011. Measles Mary, an outbreak amongst the vaccinated patients. Now, in this particular case, patient zero was a twice vaccinated 22-year-old woman. She then had contact with 88 other people. All of the people who got measles from her, the four who did, were all vaccinated individuals. Two of them had vaccination records as patient zero did that showed that they had been vaccinated twice. The other two people had been vaccinated according to what they found in their blood, but they didn't have their records. So we've got five people who come down with it. The person who starts it 
is vaccinated. And of course, this is something that was talked about in Science Magazine and many other publications at the time. This, this came out last April, April 2014. They said, well, you know, you weren't supposed to be able to transmit the disease just as a vaccinated individual. is not supposed to be able to uh, transmit the disease. They say in the insert that you can come down with measles-like symptoms because they don't want to say that you can come down with measles. You're being injected with live measles. They say it's weakened. But what if something went wrong? What if you do come down with measles? That's what happened in these particular cases. People could still come down with measles, and they showed that when this woman came down with measles, she was able to transmit that to others. In other words, she didn't have measles-like symptoms. She actually had measles. She had been vaccinated twice. Now, contrast what we're being told. Contrast the way people are being demonized who haven't been vaccinated because, quite frankly, we have concerns not only about the efficacy of the vaccine, if it's effective or not, and we see that in many of these cases, uh, that's not the case. They're telling us that it's 99% effective, yet there was an outbreak last year in California before this Disneyland outbreak where they had 18% of the people who came down with it were vaccinated. That's not a 99% protection. In this particular case in Disneyland, 14% of the people that got it were vaccinated. That's not 99%. In the case of 2011, 100% of the people who got it were vaccinated. And if you go back and you look at that, they're telling us, again, that 90% of the people who aren't vaccinated are going to come down with it. They also tell us the CDC's numbers. These are both CDC numbers. They also tell us that in New York State, 90% of the people have been uh, vaccinated. So that would mean if you apply those numbers that out of the 88 people that were exposed, there should have been nine people who were exposed to this if you hold with the 90% vaccination rate. And 90% of those should have come down with it. Where are those patients? Didn't happen. Out of 231 tertiary contacts, third, one level removed, nobody got it. Yet we're told that this is a life-threatening disease. We all need to be vaccinated. When I was a child, before the measles vaccine, it was not considered to be a serious a disease. There were about 4 million, according to the CDC's numbers again, 4 million people a year were getting measles. There were about 400 people who died each year. And of course, everybody likes to talk about Roald Dahl's daughter who died before the vaccine was available. Nevertheless, that is a 99.99% chance you're not going to die if you get measles. A 99.99% chance. That is not a life-threatening disease. Yet look at the way they treated Ebola when it came. We had the CDC lying to us about the precautions that they were taking, bringing in people who had the disease, transmitting that disease to nurses who took care of them because they were not following the kind of procedures that were necessary or even knew what the procedures were. That is a disease where 70 to 90% of the people die. Completely the opposite. Can you understand that there's some kind of an agenda here where they're lying to you, where they're telling you, shut up and listen to people in authority. And if you don't listen to people in authority, we're going to go ahead and stick you against your consent. 40 years ago, they lied to people on the information uh, handouts. They're still lying to people on the information handouts, but they don't even care about your consent anymore. Stay with us right after the break. We're going to be talking to uh, Paul Joseph Watson in the UK about another place where they're lying to us, another scientific study, man-made global warming. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The month of February is all about Valentine's Day. Big heart-shaped boxes filled with delicious candy. What if we the Patriots hijacked Valentine's Day and instead made it about human liberty and individual empowerment? I'm all about human potential. I'm all about the individual being empowered. The establishment is the opposite. That's why they spike our water with fluoride and GMO estrogen mimickers and the rest of the garbage. InfoWars is striking back in the month of February with Human Empowerment Month. How we can come together and win the human race. 
and to celebrate the kickoff of Human Empowerment Month, we're slashing prices on InfoWarsLife.com products like Super Male and Super Female Vitality. The sale is only running for the month, 20% off, and there's a lot of other powerful specials at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWarsLife.com, celebrating human potential in the month of February. Visit InfoWarsLife.com to find this special and many others in the month of February. Again, InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules. You will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue. Wild crafted from the Mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire. This winter season, it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano. Now available in our limited first run at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. From his Central Texas Command Center, deep behind enemy lines, the information war continues. It's Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight filling in for Alex today. And we're going to have Paul Joseph Watson joining us in the next segment. We're going to be talking about what has been termed by the Telegraph the biggest science scandal ever. Well, man-made global warming and the manipulation of the data to support that may be the biggest scandal ever in science. Or maybe it's the lies that we're being told about vaccines and the demands that we get the shots whether or not we like it or not. There's two parts about this that bother me. One of them is informed and the other part is consent. And of course, our government doesn't think that we should be informed about anything that they're doing. And as we just saw in that uh, flashback to 1976, the uh, 60 Minutes report, when they do give you information, frequently they lie to you about what they're doing. We've seen that with everything they do, whether it's the NSA or anything. They constantly are telling us we don't really need to be informed about what they're doing. They're doing that right now with the Trans-Pacific and Transatlantic Partnerships. They're negotiating these things in secret. They don't think that our elected representatives should know what they're doing. They certainly don't think we should know what they're doing because we're not, in their terms, stakeholders. We're not in the game. We're not in the poker game. We don't have a stake in this. We're just the sheep that they're going to do this to. Before we leave the vaccine issue, I want to bring up one more thing, and that is why Japan banned the MMR vaccine? Now, back in the early 90s, they banned it because they said that out of the nearly 4,000 medical compensation claims relating to vaccines, fully a quarter of them had been made by those that had gotten the MMR vaccine. They said 1.8 million children had been given two types of MMR and a record number in 1993 developed non-viral meningitis and other adverse conditions. And here's the interesting thing, because, you know, we get all these statistics from the CDC, and quite frankly, I'm losing my confidence in anything the CDC says. They're telling us that there's a chance one in 1,000 today that you will die if you get measles. And of course, before the vaccination program started in the 1960s, according to the CDC's own data, there was a chance of one in 10,000 that you would die from the measles. But now they're saying it's one in 1,000. This is interesting. Out of Japan, they said that one in every 900 children was experiencing problems related to the vaccines. They said that was over 2,000 times higher than what they had been told. You see, when they want your consent, they lie to you about the information. You're not allowed to be told the truth about whether it's effective or whether or not it's safe. And this is the last thing I want to say about this. Tests on the spinal fluid of 125 children affected were carried out to see if the vaccine had gotten into the children's nervous system. They found one that was confirmed case and two further suspected cases. In other words, these are neurological diseases that people are suffering from, just as we saw in the case of swine flu. 
They were coming down for the most part with Guillain-Barre syndrome. Other things, there were autoimmune uh, diseases as well as diseases and attacks on the central nervous system. The woman who got it, who basically did not take vaccines at the time, she was reluctant to get it. Her husband was very grief-stricken that he had talked her into doing it. She was essentially paralyzed. They had to do a tracheotomy on her to keep her from dying. She couldn't even breathe on her own. She would never be able to walk on her own after that. And that was all for something that never materialized. They pushed that on everybody, even though they didn't have any known confirmed cases. So when we look at this, what Japan was doing was they basically stopped the MMR vaccine, which is what Dr. Andrew Wakefield was suggesting people do. Get separate measles, mumps, and rubella vaccines. Get it at different times. Spread this out if you're going to get the vaccines. And of course, we still have concerns about other things that are in the vaccines, the adjuvants, the preservatives, other contaminants that are in the vaccines. They're not a clean vaccine. There's an article up on Slate saying, hey, we need to force the parents. We need to sue the parents. We need our herd immunity. They say protecting the herd. And they show a picture of people who are protesting it. And they say, Virginia wants clean vaccines. They don't even ask what a clean vaccine would be. Well, a clean vaccine would be something without aluminum, without formaldehyde, without so many of these other things that are added to it that completely change the nature of it. It's no longer there just to provoke an active immunity. There are additives to it, and those additives then become the story. You need to understand what's going on because people who don't are going to be forced to do something that is not in their best interest. They're going to be For bullied into it. Stay with us. We'll be right history, back. Civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. You don't have to be a doctor to know. The fall and winter months are the most dangerous time of year in North America when it comes to you and your family's health. InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of silver bullet colloidal silver exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now, InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting-edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high-quality silver bullet from InfoWarsLife.com. No survival chest is complete without silver bullet. Secure your silver bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Silver bullet. KMLN Los Angeles Clone Radio. We play the songs that sound more like everyone else than anyone else. Clone. Hitler took the guns. Stalin took the guns. Mao took the guns. Fidel Castro took the guns. Hugo Chavez took the guns. 1776 will commence again if you try to take our firearms. The Republic will rise again when you attempt to take our guns. I have sworn upon the altar of God eternal hostility against every form of tyranny over the mind of man. The answer to 1984 is 1776. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host today. Joining me now is Paul Joseph Watson from the UK. We're going to talk about this story that's at the top of Drudge, the fiddling with temperature data being the biggest science scandal ever. Well, you know, there's a lot of science scandals out there. And we have a lot of scandals about the integrity of the media, as we're seeing with the uh, Brian Williams uh, scandal. But, of course, it goes way beyond his own personal integrity to the things that the mass media is promoting, like man-made global warming. Before we go to Paul, though, I want to tell you that uh, this hour of the Alex Jones Show is brought to you by the products that we sell at InfoWarsLife.com. And we have a new one now, Ancient Defense. It's the new flagship product uh, at InfoWarsLife.com. Right now, with a special introductory offer, you can get it for 25% off. That's only $14.99 for a very limited time. And that combines, this is Ancient Defense, combines the power of ancient herbs with cutting-edge developments in a nutritional science to produce this proprietary extract blend. So this is uh, something that helps to support the operation. It is something that you need to do to promote your 
immune system, your own personal defense. The, your best immune system is your best protection against these types of diseases. You need to take responsibility for your own personal health. That's one of the reasons why it gets me so angry when I see people telling me I just need to shut up and listen to the people in authority. They don't need my consent. They don't need to inform me what's in this. I just need to uh, shut up and take my vaccines and give them to my kids. And I guess that's uh, that's something I've, I've seen you talk about too, Paul, uh, the fact that they no longer care even enough to lie to us about the st statistics as we were just talking about in the last hour back in the uh, swine flu epidemic. So many people were harmed with that. They were lying to them about what they were giving them, but today they don't even care. They just say, we're not even going to tell you anything. Just uh, do what we say. Well, what's amazing, David, about this whole vaccine debate is just the vehemence with which the mainstream media has come out and shamed so-called anti-vaxxers. And again, they're using the same kind of narrative which they use to frame Holocaust deniers. So yes. even though this case in California out of Disneyland was caused, this measles outbreak was caused by a foreigner visiting Disneyland. It had nothing whatsoever to do with the domestic vaccination program in California. They suddenly blamed everything on anti-vaxxers. And of course, we shouldn't consider for a second the fact that the pharmaceutical industry, which advertises on CNN, on Fox News, on MSNBC, is worth billions and billions of dollars a year. Yet we're told not even to consider for a second the fact that that could have some impact, some direction, some sway in the narrative we've seen over the past couple of weeks, which is to denounce people who merely question what's being injected into their own body and into the body of their children. So yeah, I don't think the we main would ever thing that seen... shocked me about it was just this this witch hunt that took yeah. place against anybody who questioned vaccines whatsoever when we know that the measles vaccine in the past 10 years has killed uh, around 112 people, I believe, in America. The measles virus has killed nobody. So to, yeah. to be denounced merely for asking questions about the safety the side effects of vaccines is, is the most shocking aspect for me. And it's just amazing to me, especially when we go back and we look at what happened in 1976. I mean, everything is being replayed now, except that there isn't a 60 Minutes organization in the mainstream media that's going out there and asking these kinds of questions. Because, as you point out, they're all owned by the pharmaceutical companies. Most of the ads that you see on uh, the big news channels are pharmaceutical ads. And as I said earlier... It's if people can't look at those ads where they have the uh, you know fluffy sunshine uh, puppy dogs and children playing in the in the fields if they can't look at that and listen to the rapid uh, litany of complications that you're going to get possibly from that uh, pharmaceutical drug if they can't recognize that cognitive dissonance there then I'm really concerned that they're going to ram this thing down people's throat. And, and certainly these uh, pharmaceutical companies own the mainstream media. There's no question about that. Yeah, and the, the other angle, of course, was, you know, we saw when Senator Rand Paul, before he became senator in 2010, was running his campaign, they desperately attempted to dig up any kind of scandal whatsoever on Rand Paul. The best they could do is the Aqua Buddy, Aqua Buddha <laughs> controversy, some prank that he did in college yeah. like 30 years ago. Yeah. And now they seized upon a comment he made on a radio show to turn the entire narrative of the news cycle for the entirety of the past week about this question of mandatory vaccination. So it was also obviously a ploy to try and demonize Rand Paul because they want a Republican establishment candidate to run against probably Hillary. So whereas Chris Christie almost immediately backed away and retracted, you know, Rand Paul stood firm, at least at first, then he had the photo of being injected with the vaccine, but it was definitely used to try and defame and demonize Rand Paul. That's what we saw with the, the whole media juggernaut that arose af after basically a throwaway comment he made on a radio show. Well, you know, the way this is being sold, uh, just like Megyn Kelly was saying, it's not, sometimes we need Big Brother, you know, and this is a time when we need Big Brother. We see Forbes we see on the right, we see Slate on the left talking about how we need to sue parents who don't vaccinate, how we need to jail them. And of course, they always want to present this, Paul, in the sense of protecting the herd. Well, you know, you're not going to have herd immunity if you don't have individual immunity. And that's why I was talking about these previous outbreaks where they've had uh, over 50% of the people have been vaccinated twice. Or the one in New York where 100% of the people had been vaccinated. Patient zero had been vaccinated twice. Uh, it doesn't, they're not providing these people with 
individual immunity. And in the same way, you're told that you need to get rid of your civil liberties. You shouldn't have uh, any consent uh, issues there that you can uh, object to. You know, you should say you shouldn't be able to say, I object. I don't want to do this. I want to opt out. No, you shouldn't do that because it's in the herd's best interest for you to do this. Well, if the herd's not protected by that uh, individually, then they're not going to be protected collectively. And if you don't protect people's individual rights, then we're not going to be a safer society. That's what people can't seem to understand. Yeah, the point I made about it, which, you know, aside from the science itself, even if you accept the basic scientific foundation of vaccinations, which most people do, to then give the government power a gunpoint basically to inject someone against their will, which is the logical conclusion of the argument. That's what they want. That's what the legislation introduced in California is calling for. That is more of a threat than either the measles virus itself or even the side effects of the vaccine. Yes. So they're trying to even go beyond that debate and say, give us the power to inject you at gunpoint with whatever we want. And then you can extrapolate that out to scientists all over the world who have called for putting lithium in the tap water yes. to keep people happy, to get suicide rates down. So if you give them that power, if you create that pretext, that could spin out of control in a hurry. But they've tried to frame the debate around this whole power issue of giving the government the authority to inject somebody at gunpoint against their will. So that's the point I made in the video. We need to we need to win that debate first, and then we can talk about the science and the side effects of the vaccine. But for them to immediately seize upon that and try to establish that precedent is the biggest threat, in my view. We could always we could see that this was coming back when e there was the Ebola concerns because we had some pharmaceutical developed uh, drugs that they were working on, and there was a lot of talk at the time about how well you know if this gets out of control, we're going to have these untested uh, pharmaceutical drugs or vaccines or uh, something that that we're going to use to treat people. We're not going to have time to test them, so we're going to have to mandate this in the public's interest. We're going to have to mandate that people get this, even though we haven't tested it. And so what they're doing now, I think, Paul is they're using this measles situation. They're trumping it up into something that is all out of proportion to the actual risk because they're trying to set an established precedent here where they can force us to take untested drugs with a medical tyranny. Stay with us. We'll be right back with Paul Joseph Watson. We're going to talk about another science issue, and that is global warming. We'll be right back. The government's Department of Homeland Security is buying up loads of ammo. At the same time, they're restricting civilians' rights to own and purchase firearms. Can you put two and two together? Infidel body armor can stop every round, including hollow points and 308 sniper rounds. Is reasonably priced and fully legal. But for how long? Go to InfidelBodyArmor.com, spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L, BodyArmor.com. Infidel body armor just won't quit. When cells become toxic, they die early and aging sets in. No one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. Just one of the key compounds, BioPQQ, is backed by major clinical studies. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? We now have the synergistic solution. Secure your DNA force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano now available in our limited first run at infowarslife.com that's infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139 the month of February is all about Valentine's Day. Big heart-shaped boxes filled
filled with delicious candy? What if we, the Patriots, hijacked Valentine's Day and instead made it about human liberty and individual empowerment? I'm all about human potential. I'm all about the individual being empowered. The establishment is the opposite. That's why they spike our water with fluoride, GMO, estrogen mimickers, and the rest of the garbage. InfoWars is striking back in the month of February with Human Empowerment Month. How we can come together and win the human race. And to celebrate the kickoff of Human Empowerment Month, we're slashing prices on InfoWarsLife.com products like Super Male and Super Female Vitality. The sale is only running for the month, 20% off, and there's a lot of other powerful specials at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWarsLife.com, celebrating human potential in the month of February. Visit InfoWarsLife.com to find this special and many others in the month of February. Again, InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. What disaster is so powerful? It unleashes a chain of mass pandemics, economic meltdowns, and violent food riots, all at the same time. NASA has already set the countdown timer, and right now the 21st century apocalypse is less than 13 months away. Former CIA Director James Woolsey says two-thirds of U.S. population could perish. In a matter of seconds, the world as we know it will cease to exist. The world's economy will be wiped out. Mass riots will follow. Ancient diseases will reemerge. How will you shield yourself and your loved ones from this upcoming apocalypse? Go to darkestdays.info to find out proven methods of protecting yourself, your loved ones, and even your entire community when this worst case scenario unravels. That's D A R K E S T D A Y S dot I N F O. Darkestdays.info. Go there before this life saving information becomes unavailable to the large public. Go to darkestdays.info now. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. Live from the InfoWars.com studios, it's Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host today, and joining me from the UK is Paul Joseph Watson. Now, there's a story that's at the top of the Drudge Report, several links about people questioning the readjustment of temperatures to show a warming trend. This is something that's been going on for quite a while. We had uh, ClimateGate uh, back in 2009 and after where they uh, leaked 1,000 emails in the first ClimateGate. We also had 5,000 emails later leaked. And this is something, Paul, that started in the UK. This was uh, predominantly the emails from um, East Anglia University, I believe, if I remember correctly, uh, the climate research unit there. And, of course, there was a lot of... um, Back and forth about uh, the data not matching their models. How could they, quote, hide the decline? It looks like they found a way to do it very easily. We've got a report out of Fox News that says uh, a report released earlier this week by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Agency, NOAA, said this is the warmest year ever in the nation in, in 2012. And yet Roy Spencer, a climatologist at the University of Alabama in Huntsville, is not buying it. He says 2012 wasn't necessarily warmer than it was back in the 1930s. NOAA has made so many adjustments to the data, it's ridiculous. And another person, Steve Goddard, said the adjusted data is meaningless garbage. It bears no resemblance to the thermometer data that it started out as. Every time NOAA makes adjustments, they make recent years warmer. I'm very suspicious, especially for how warm they have made 2012. Paul, what's your take? Well... They came out and said that 2014 was the hottest year ever, all these big scientific bodies, NOAA, NASA, etc. But they were using the temperature data from the, from the surface measurement models, when in fact, if you take the temperature data from the satellite measurements, it shows that the 18-year, quote, pause in global warming was maintained in 2014. It's known that the satellite data is more accurate than the ground data. And even with the ground data, if you accept that as fact, the margin of error in which it could have been wrong was higher than the, the gauge they said that it you know, signified that 2014 was the hottest year ever. So that was basically debunked. Now this has come out, which is even bigger. And as he said, of course, ClimateGate, it came out that 
with the hacked emails that these top climate bodies, including the one in East Anglia, which is one of the three biggest in the world, they were sending emails to each other expressing the need to, quote, hide the decline in global temperatures. The global warming alarmists came back and said, well, why would they need to hide the decline when the raw data proves that global warming has been a trend throughout the past 20 years? This, I believe the first email was from 99. Well, now it's come out that a blogger investigated the raw data initially from Paraguay from this uh, surface temperature uh, measurement. Then he went and looked at one in the Arctic, Canada and Siberia. And in each case, and this is in the Telegraph, it's top of Drudge, we've also got it in Infowars, they added at least one degree to the raw <laughs> data in each one of these separate ground surface temperature measurements. Yeah. Why not? So that, <laughs> that proves that they've deliberately amended and adjusted these figures to fit with their narrative of global warming increasing over the past 20 years, when in fact the satellite data shows that it's stable, that there has been no global warming over the past 20 years. So again, they've been caught completely red-handed. There are now climatologists saying that these people should be put in jail. Other people who fake scientific data get put in jail routinely. And now we see this and we're going to see a massive cover up to try and explain this away from the climate change lobby. Well, of course, there's huge consequences involved in this because they want to use this to establish a global taxation regime. And they also want to replace, essentially replace the uh, uh, central banks and their paper currency. They, don't want, they want to replace that with a system where we not only have to pay some private corporation every time they print paper money, we have to pay some private corporation every time we do anything that involves using any energy or releasing any natural gases like CO2 or methane. So that's something that essentially could be used to shut down everybody. I mean, if you every time your uh, your pet dog uh, breaks wind, you got to send a check to Al Gore. I mean, that is a a recipe for complete control of the economy from a global perspective. They need to have something, Paul, that they can enact globally to take money from us on a global scale to fund a global government. We should all be very skeptical of how this is being used, and we should all be very skeptical of how they have fought tooth and nail to hide these emails. I mean, Michael Mann in the University of Virginia was also involved in these East Anglia uh, emails. And not only in East Anglia, but also in the University of Virginia, they have fought to keep all this stuff hidden because they don't want us to see their emails. They don't want us to see the raw data that they base their conclusions on. They're supposed to be able to go in and we're just to trust them because they work for the government or because they have a degree uh, in science. We should just listen to them and shut up. They shouldn't have to show anything or prove anything to us. And if we say otherwise, we're just ignorant deniers. Deniers, yeah, again, you know, linking us with Holocaust deniers. Mm -hmm. And that, again, illustrates how desperate they are to enforce this narrative, because I'm not a scientist, you can debate the science again, but just look at the way they've enforced this narrative. Last week on the show, we played the ad which is running on CNN, uh, with Julia Roberts as the voice of Mother Nature, saying, I've starved greater species than you. Yeah. <laughs> that ties right back to the Club of Rome, the first global revolution, when they said that they would... Um, sell global warming by characterizing humanity as the enemy. That is exemplified in that ad perfectly. And then we had things like the 2010 1010 Global Campaign, which was an organization backed by huge corporations, government funded partly, my tax money went to pay for this, where they depicted school children who refused to lower their carbon footprint being violently exploded in the classroom. Yeah. They later had to apologize and remove that video. But again, it illustrated this authoritarian bullying uh, campaign where people are shamed and called deniers linked with Holocaust deniers and shamed into believing this narrative, not based on any scientific argument, which they want to shut down and say the debate is over, completely flying in the face of the very fundamental nature of science, which is that it's you know an evolving process. We're always updating our knowledge. And they want to enforce this narrative and say, if you don't agree with it, if you don't lower your carbon footprint, if you don't buy the propaganda, then you're you're on a par with a Holocaust denier. And maybe you should even be killed. There are top environmentalists yeah. Oh, yeah. who say that people should be put in camps and enslaved in an eco-green police state. 
Very similar to what they're saying about people who want to be, to want to have informed consent about vaccines. I mean, when we look at what's going on with this, this climate information, as you pointed out, if they're looking at the temperature from space, that's a very different way to measure the temperature than if you collect it on the surface. Because if you move it around, I mean, anybody that's, that's driven around and looked at the temperature gauges on their car routinely back in North Carolina, I would see a three to four degree difference between where I lived in the woods and going back to the city. And it wasn't even a large city. If you want to put a thermometer on an airplane tarmac, you're going to get a much higher uh, temperature reading. And of course, they can fudge the data that way. But as I pointed out today in these uh, recently released figures uh, from this uh, blogger who went back and looked at some of the data, they just add a degree here, add a degree there. If they won't show you the data and they tell you you've got to listen to them because they're an authority, that should raise red flags. Going to be right back with Paul. We're going to talk about something creepy from Samsung. They're basically channeling 1984. Stay with us. For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. You don't have to be a doctor to know. The fall and winter months are the most dangerous time of year in North America when it comes to you and your family's health. InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting-edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high-quality Silver Bullet from InfoWarsLife.com. No survival chest is complete without Silver Bullet. Secure your Silver Bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Silver Bullet. The month of February is all about Valentine's Day. Big heart-shaped boxes filled with delicious candy. What if we the Patriots hijacked Valentine's Day and instead made it about human liberty and individual empowerment? I'm all about human potential. I'm all about the individual being empowered. The establishment is the opposite. That's why they spike our water with fluoride, GMO, estrogen mimickers, and the rest of the garbage. InfoWars is striking back in the month of February with Human Empowerment Month. How we can come together and win the human race. And to celebrate the kickoff of Human Empowerment Month, we're slashing prices on InfoWarsLife.com products like Super Male and Super Female Vitality. The sale is only running for the month, 20% off, and there's a lot of other powerful specials at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWarsLife.com, celebrating human potential in the month of February. Visit InfoWarsLife.com to find this special and many others in the month of February. Again, InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. In the near future. When you realize how fake it all is, the football, the basketball. Security alert. Security alert. This is Homeland Security. Analysis. InfoWars building independent media operations. We let the worst people get controlled and tell us that we are the ones responsible. Prime Directive discredit Alex Jones. Jones is the wildly popular conspiracy theorist. A popular conspiracy theory talk show called InfoWars. Alex Jones is now in an Austin jail. These people are assaulted. Targeting of Patriots engaged. They are never going to stop. They're never going to deviate from their program until we stop them. Block free iPhone app at InfoWars.com. Block free podcast and video feed. Imperative. Destroy Prison Planet TV. You gotta set your eye on the enemy, not worry about what propaganda they put out. Intellectually, it's begun and you can feel it. The average person's life is filled with unexpected challenges. Unlock the energy it takes to defeat these daily beasts with super male or super female vitality, specifically designed to assist the body in regulating proper hormone balance to create superior vitality in males and females. Supercharge and conquer your world at InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-88-253-3139. The government's Department of Homeland Security is buying up loads of ammo. At the same time, they're restricting civilians' rights to own and purchase firearms. Can you put two and two together? Infidel body armor can stop every round, including hollow points and 308 sniper rounds. Is reasonably priced and fully legal. But for how long? Go to InfidelBodyArmor.com, spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L BodyArmor.com. 
Infidel body armor just won't quit. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. We've got it. Waging war on corruption. All right, you are go. It's Alex Jones coming to you live from the front lines of the info war. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host today. Uh, uh, Paul Joseph Watson is joining me from the UK for this segment. If you would like to call in and comment on some of the stories we've been talking about in terms of the loss of consent, the way people have been lied to by the CDC and the government and the media in the past, uh, or if you'd like to talk about this uh, climate change fiddling with the data. You know, if we question authority, we're called deniers, whether it's climate deniers or vaccines. You know, we're not denying that there's climate. We're not denying the efficacy of vaccines in theory. What we're concerned about are the way that they're using the data, misusing the data, lying to us about the risks involved in both vaccines and the way that they're manipulating the data so they can get some kind of a global carbon tax. Also have global uh, carbon indulgences that we play that we pay to Al Gore and others. And this next uh, section, I want to talk to uh, Paul about Samsung. But if you'd like to call in, the number is 877-789-ALEX. That's 877-789-2539. Now, Paul, there's a uh, story today about the Samsung TV. And of course, we've been saying, Alex has been saying for a long time, that uh, they're monitoring people through phones, through televisions, long before they admitted that, through your computer monitor, through the camera that's in your uh, computer monitor. Uh, long before they admitted that, Alex was saying that, you were saying that, and now Samsung is basically putting out a, a policy, a privacy policy, when you buy their smart television that, as an Electronic Frontier Foundation activist pointed out in a tweet here, it looks exactly like Orwell's 1984. You know, this says, please be aware that if your spoken, wor that your spoken words include personal or other sensitive information, that information will be will be among data captured and transmitted to a third party through your use of voice recognition. And he puts that side by side with the clip from 1984 where it says any sound that Winston made above the level of a very low whisper could be picked up. And of course, there was no way of knowing whether he, you were being watched at any given moment. That's the world in which we live. But of course, I guess, Paul, many people are willing to just willingly go into this Orwellian nightmare so they can use the latest electronic gadget. Well, we now have a situation with the emergence of the Internet of Things whereby, you know, John McCain mentioned it in the aftermath of the Don Sterling controversy with the Clippers where uh, his private comments were made into a public controversy. McCain basically said, consider everything that you say, even in the privacy of your own home, not on the Internet, not over the phone, just Private conversations, consider that somebody could be listening. And now we're into that situation because this is a story that we broke in November. Now, finally, you know, three, four months later, TechCrunch is reporting on it. And I found or I've sent a link to Samsung's global privacy policy. And it basically says what you just read out, that um, they basically warn people not to engage in sensitive conversations because they're being recorded and potentially handed to a third party because Samsung Smart TV works via voice activation and voice control. So, you know, you direct the television to um, turn on, to flip to a certain channel. They're also recording everything you say. What they don't report in TechCrunch today is the fact that uh, one of our listeners actually contacted Samsung about this, called them up and asked, quote, is that what this is? Are you complying with a federal court order to record what's going on in my living room? The answer from the Samsung representative was, yes, sir, exactly. Now, wow. she seemed somewhat confused as to exactly what he was asking. But Samsung has not officially responded to this, the fact that they openly admit that your private conversations are being recorded and potentially handed on to a third party. And this, this is already happening with other technology. Uh, Microsoft Connect users who were playing uh, video games based around football management simulations during the game, if their team was losing and they shouted out obscenities in, the, in their own living room, 
The microphone from the Connect picked up those obscenities. And within a day, they received a notification from Microsoft, which basically punished them, took away some credits from their account because they'd used these obscenities during the game. So even in the privacy of their own living room, their, their private conversations, the words they speak are being picked up and then you later use to punish them in terms of their game credits. So now Samsung admits that it's, it's basically recording your private conversations. They could be passed on to this third party, which has created the software for the voice control. And again, as you said, the Electronic Frontier Foundation compared it to a passage out of Orwell's 1984. And um, the, the similarities are chilling. Well, you know, it, it really is 1984, Paul, because we know that uh, amongst the third parties that they're passing this information to, of course, is the NSA. And that's why they have pushed so hard for CISPA. We keep hearing in the wake of this supposed hack of uh, Sony over the interview, we keep hearing that we need more cyber intelligence sharing. And that's what CISPA is, is a Cyber Intelligence Sharing Protection Act. But you're not being protected. The whole point of CISPA is to protect these companies like Samsung who are spying on you and turning this information over to whether it's commercial interests for third parties or whether it's a government that wants to spy on you. The protection is to give them legal immunity from criminal actions, from civil lawsuits when they take your data and they use you as a profit center. So that's why they're doing it. They've been doing it for a very long time. They're just trying with CISPA to give legal immunity to the corporations who are cooperating with the surveillance state. Yeah, and the NSA, I mean, William Binney has made the point many times, the size of NSA facilities like the one in Bluffdale, Utah, are so big that Binney makes the point, they can't just be for storing metadata. They no. wouldn't need facilities the size that they have and they're building more of just to store that data. They must be storing the personal content of people's private conversations, both online, email, text messages, and even through things like this voice activation program eventually. So it's, it's not just about the metadata, it's about your private conversations. Another story, you mentioned intelligence sharing in the final few minutes here. I posted a blurb up on Infowars.com um, about 20 minutes before I came on the show because this just broke tonight. And we talk about shock fatigue often, how the, the tyranny is so out of control that nothing really surprises us anymore. Mm -hmm. This surprised me because it's emerged out of The Guardian that in the aftermath of the Charlie Hebdo attacks in Paris last month, of course, uh, killing 12, wounding 11 during that horrific attack in Paris, People who purchased Charlie Hebdo magazine in Britain in the days and weeks after that attack were investigated by the UK police. Huh. So instead of investigating potential terrorists <laughs> who might be inspired to attack uh, European cities after the Paris atrocity, they were actually instead focusing their resources on getting the, the names and addresses of people who had gone to news agents to stores. Um, in England and purchased this magazine. Wow. Absolutely you, shocking. You know, you're talking about fatigue, and I think that, that there really is a real danger in fatigue about the surveillance state, because it wasn't even a year ago that we had a Snowden uh, document that was leaked. Of course, this one was leaked in Germany, and at that time, you know, people were just really getting tired of taking, a, of looking at what was coming out, I think. But that was, it was three slides that were being circulated through the NSA bragging about how they had created an Orwellian Big Brother state by using the iPhone. And they showed a picture of the iconic 1984 Apple commercial uh, introducing the Mac, and they said, who would have thought in 1984, and then the next slide, it says that this would be Big Brother, and they show uh, Steve Jobs holding an iPhone. And then the third slide says, and that people would line up to buy it, and they show everybody lined up outside of an Apple store. That's exactly what's happening. It is 1984, they're laughing at us, it is an Orwellian tyranny, and yet people are lining up to get iPhones, or lining up to get these uh, stupid Samsung televisions because they can talk to them and uh, supposedly it'll, it'll do what they tell them to do, but it's listening to everything they say and reporting it back to the government. Yeah, no iPhone location services, if you've got an iPhone, just go into your settings and look at your location history. Yeah. Every place you've visited is stored in your location settings. And of course, we know that uh, through the Snowden revelations, um, the NSA was had direct access to Apple's servers. 
So Absolutely. all that information is being fed back. Most people well, don't even know. We're out of time, Paul. Thanks for joining us. Paul Joseph Watson, stay with us right after the break. The I'll take your call. February calls. is all about Valentine's Day. Big heart-shaped boxes filled with delicious candy. What if we, the Patriots, hijacked Valentine's Day and instead made it about human liberty and individual empowerment? I'm all about human potential. I'm all about the individual being empowered. The establishment is the opposite. That's why they spike our water with fluoride, GMO, estrogen mimickers, and the rest of the garbage. InfoWars is striking back in the month of February with Human Empowerment Month. How we can come together and win the human race. And to celebrate the kickoff of Human Empowerment Month, we're slashing prices on InfoWarsLife.com products like Super Male and Super Female Vitality. The sale is only running for the month, 20% off, and there's a lot of other powerful specials at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWarsLife.com, celebrating human potential in the month of February. Visit InfoWarsLife.com to find this special and many others in the month of February. Again, InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. What disaster is so powerful? It unleashes a chain of mass pandemics, economic meltdowns, and violent food riots all at the same time. NASA has already set the countdown timer, and right now the 21st century apocalypse is less than 13 months away. Former CIA Director James Woolsey says two-thirds of U.S. population could perish. In a matter of seconds, the world as we know it will cease to exist. The world's economy will be wiped out. Mass riots will follow. Ancient diseases will reemerge. How will you shield yourself and your loved ones from this upcoming apocalypse? Go to darkestdays.info to find out proven methods of protecting yourself, your loved ones, and even your entire community when this worst-case scenario unravels. That's D-A-R-K-E-S-T-D-A-Y-S dot I-N-F-O. Darkestdays.info. Go there before this life-saving information becomes unavailable to the large public. Go to darkestdays.info now. When cells become toxic, they die early and aging sets in. No one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. Just one of the key compounds, BioPQQ, is backed by major clinical studies. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? We now have the synergistic solution. Secure your DNA force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. The average person's life is filled with unexpected challenges. Unlock the energy it takes to defeat these daily beasts with super male or super female vitality, specifically designed to assist the body in regulating proper hormone balance to create superior vitality in males and females. Supercharge and conquer your world at InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-88-253-3139. Used since before the days of the Roman Empire to support the body's natural systems and enhance overall health. Introducing the new InfoWarsLife.com oil of oregano formulation, a highly advanced nutraceutical form of this key herb that has been traditionally used by civilizations for thousands of years to promote health. We have now procured the most high quality and potent forms of oregano oil on the market, sourced from top leading manufacturers to ensure a concentrated level of bioactive ingredients extracted directly from the wild herb and sealed in easy to use capsules you will no longer need to endure the burning of liquid oregano on the tongue wild crafted from the mediterranean oregano species that experts agree is one of the most powerful and most challenging to acquire this winter season it's more important than ever to secure this true form of oil of oregano now available in our limited first run at infowarslife.com that's infowarslife.com or call 888-253-3139 You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Hello, this is Hank Hill, and I'm telling you what, you need to listen to Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah. Infoworth.com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Live from Austin, Texas, broadcasting worldwide, it's Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host in this final segment. I'm going to go to your calls. I'll go to Jason in Texas in just a moment. 
Before we do, I want to let you know about our new product, of course, Ancient Defense. It's available at InfoWarsLife.com. It's a, a powerful blend of 14 specific herbs and extracts. Uh, you can get that right now for 25% off as a special introductory offer. We also have another special where if you get two nascent iodine, you can get one Ancient Defense free. That'd save you $20. Uh, as a way to stock up on X2 and support your immune system with ancient defense. Let's go to uh, Jason in Texas. Jason, you said you wanted to talk about vaccines. We've been talking about that a lot this program. Go ahead. Yeah, David. So I just wanted to bring up the fact that uh, uh, everybody seems to be talking about if, you don't, if you're not vaccinated, then you know, you're the one that's basically causing the infection or spreading the virus or the bacteria. But the one thing that people don't take in uh, into consideration is, is that um, you can still carry the bacteria or the virus in your nasal passages on your skin yes. um, when you are vaccinated. It does not guarantee that you are somehow impervious to infection. Now, you could be a carrier just like HIV. Yes. And so... Absolutely. So, and we've uh, seen that in these outbreaks, as we talked about earlier in the program. Back in 2011, all of the people, including patient zero in that outbreak, had been vaccinated. Three of them had uh, records that showed that they'd been vaccinated twice. We saw the case in uh, Canada where they had 52 out of, I think it was 98. It was about 53% of the kids that came down with measles in that outbreak. 53% of them had been vaccinated. So the numbers that they're giving you from the CDC have absolutely no credibility at all. We see that even in this most recent outbreak in Disneyland, 14% of the people who came down with it were vaccinated. Prior to that, they had an outbreak in, uh, in California a year ago where 18% of the people who came down with it had been vaccinated. So it's not conveying immunity to those people. So the efficacy figures that they're giving us are cooked. And we also have a lot of questions about the safety. We've seen time and again uh, issues brought up about the things that they've added to it, the adjuvants, the preservatives that we know are very dangerous. And so it's a rational thing to question this. But of course, they don't care if we have any consent to what they're doing. They just want to force it on us. Yeah, I, I'm, I've seen the same thing. I mean, I've put out information, I've put out studies, and, and nobody will read it. They just automatically believe whatever's on Fox News or whatever. But the one thing that I think that is super effective is um, I actually just started writing back to people saying, read the insert. And yes. then I would include links that basically link to every vaccine and their manufacturer so that now they can't deny they can't say that it's not credible because, you know, you just picked this off of some random news site. Now you're sending them the direct link of the insert, and I'm just responding, just read the insert. It's real simple. Yeah, it's no and, but the problem, the problem, Jason, is that when we saw back in 1976, the CDC lied to people. At that time, they were still saying, hey, we need people's consent. So the way they got people's consent was to give them information about a vaccine that was different from the one that they actually used. So even then, they weren't telling people the truth. They weren't informing them in order to get their consent. They weren't informing them legally as what was happening. We saw a lot of uh, people who came down with very, very serious reactions to that vaccine in a situation, as Mike Wallace pointed out, when he questioned the guy, David uh, Sensor, who was head of the CDC at that time, later became the CDC historian. I guess it's true what uh, uh, Churchill said, those who win get to write the history. He was panicking the public, even though they didn't have any cases that they could point to where people had come down with the swine flu. It was an absolute hoax perpetrated on the public. But, of course, the pharmaceutical companies made a lot of money out of that. Thank you so much, Jason. Let's move on to uh, Andrew in Illinois. I got several calls here I want to try to get through. Go ahead, Andrew. Yeah, so I went to three pharmacies today, and uh, none of them would part with their copies out of the uh, vaccine bottle with the insert. One uh, pharmacy did give me the uh, vaccine information statement, which has nothing to do with the, what's inside the uh, well, uh, inside the package, but also that I noted that in the uh, Disneyland vaccine outbreak, before it happened, they had dutifully had required all of their employees to get a measles vaccine vaccination. Oh, that's interesting. We I didn't know that. Happened. <laughs> That's interesting. Especially in light of the fact the that they want to tell us. I'm sorry, go ahead. I think that's where they got the measles from. As, as, as possible, well. because they want to tell people that you can't get measles from it or that you can't spread measles from it. And yet, when they finally came around to talking about the outbreak in New York in 2011, and that was only released in April of last year, it took them three years to talk about it. In that particular case, 
patient zero, the index patient, was somebody who had been vaccinated twice. They had the records. And she transmitted that to other people. They want to say, well, you can't really transmit. Even though it's a live uh, virus, you can't transmit it to people because you'll just, at worst, you'll have measles-like symptoms. No, you can get measles and you can transfer it to other people. We've seen that happen. It happened in New York. Thank you, Andrew. Let's go to uh, Doug in North Dakota. Doug? Hello, Doug. Are you there? Let's go to... Uh... Yeah, I'm here. Okay, I'm go here. ahead. Go ahead. I'm here. Hello? Yes, go ahead. You're on the air. Oh, okay, good deal. Hey, uh, okay, my uh, topic was uh, information fatigue. It's getting real serious out here with those of us who are paying attention and trying to uh, be a voice for, for reason and for sanity and, and to get the word out. And, and, the, and the situation that I see more and more and more is that people are totally either dropped out, have they don't even know which ocean is on the east and west coast of the United States, much less the, the, the minutia of the information that we daily absorb. And I'm just curious, given the, the new FCC uh, rollout of, the, of taking over the Internet, if it isn't just time for us just to completely just drop out and take over the AM and FM where airwaves uh, pirate-like on, on the un, on the unused channels and just, you know. Well, I don't know. Like you, you point out, it, it is an information war, and, and it is absolutely amazing to hear the kind of nonsense that's being spewed by people. We started out the program with that guy from a, a website called Blue Nation just saying, you know, Listen to the doctors. I mean, like they've gone to like these real, you know, specialized schools for years and they know all the parts of your kids' bodies inside and out, you know. I mean, that's what passes for critical thinking anymore. Just listen to the people in authority, we're told. That's not good enough. And I don't really know what we do. It is very concerning what's happening to the FCC because all this stuff about net neutrality and saying we've got to protect you from the gatekeepers. Really? The FCC is setting itself up as gatekeepers. We don't need the FCC on the Internet. It's existed for years without them. We don't need them controlling content. And we see over and over again that that's specifically what they want to do. We've had uh, FCC commissioners, uh, the Republicans who are in the minority, point out that that's exactly what they want to do, surveying print media even. Talking to them about, you know, how do you, uh, how do, you do the news? How do you determine what stories you're going to uh, cover? They don't have any jurisdiction in print media, and they shouldn't have any jurisdiction on the Internet. Uh, let's go to Rick in Wisconsin. Rick. Yeah, good afternoon. Hey. I'd like to tell you about my experience in the Air Force. I'm a former staff sergeant, and I had a massive uh, reaction to the first flu shot back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And my name was on a list. Now, people better understand with Obamacare, you will be put on a list. And if you do not comply, you will be forcibly inoculated because uh, I was in a situation where I was the only maintenance man that could uh, purport uh, duty on my radar. And if it wasn't for my colonel, I'd have been subject to another flu shot. But uh, Was it the swine flu that you had? Was it the swine flu that you had a problem with, Rick? This was in uh, 1975, 76. Yeah, yeah. That would have been the swine and flu problem. I was, I was uh, so sick for three days. My wife worked at the hospital in uh, Langley Air Force Base in Virginia, and it was completely full. There was no room for me to go to the hospital. That's how many people they had sick out there at the time. Well, you know, that's, that's a real lesson from history that we need to go back and look at, for the, especially when we have all these appeals to just trust the government, to trust the media as how they're going to uh, you know, just, just do whatever they say. Back in 1976, as we pointed out in the, um, earlier in the program, over 40 million people got that vaccine because the CDC was panicking people. And there were 4,000 people who had serious injuries, permanent injuries from that Many people who died, and it was their relatives who were uh, suing on their behalf. 4,000 people died. I'm sure there were a lot more people who were affected by it just like you were. You weren't affected by it in a, in a life-changing way. You got very sick, but you recovered. Uh, that's it for today. Join us again tomorrow. We're going to be here at 11 Central. We also have as a guest tomorrow, Vanny Harry, who just won another victory, this time against General Mills, getting them to take a preservative out of American cereals that they don't put in anywhere else in the world. Join us tomorrow. We're going to be talking to her on The Alex Jones Show.
the government's Department of Homeland Security is buying up loads of ammo. At the same time, they're restricting civilians' rights to own and purchase firearms. Can you put two and two together? Infidel body armor can stop every round, including hollow points and 308 sniper rounds. Is reasonably priced and fully legal. But for how long? Go to InfidelBodyArmor.com, spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L BodyArmor.com. Infidel Body Armor just won't quit. When cells become toxic, they die early and aging sets in. No one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. Just one of the key compounds, BioPQQ, is backed by major clinical studies. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? We now have the synergistic solution. Secure your DNA force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. The month of February is all about Valentine's Day. Big heart-shaped boxes filled with delicious candy. What if we the Patriots hijacked Valentine's Day and instead made it about human liberty and individual empowerment? I'm all about human potential. I'm all about the individual being empowered. The establishment is the opposite. That's why they spike our water with fluoride, GMO, estrogen mimickers, and the rest of the garbage. InfoWars is striking back in the month of February with Human Empowerment Month. How we can come together and win the human race. And to celebrate the kickoff of Human Empowerment Month, we're slashing prices on InfoWarsLife.com products like Super Male and Super Female Vitality. The sale is only running for the month, 20% off, and there's a lot of other powerful specials at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWarsLife.com, celebrating human potential in the month of February. Visit InfoWarsLife.com to find this special and many others in the month of February. Again, InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show.